Hey everybody. Hey, I just wanted to do a quick video here on these Bee World Bee Box polystyrene hives from Finland. Wanted to give you a first impression of these. Uh, I am looking to put these out on my property next year in the spring. I currently have a wooden Langstroth hive. I'm going to be adding some more hives next year and I thought that I would experiment using these polystyrene hives. So this video is not a an explanation of how they perform in the field. This is a first impression from just an assembly point of view and an engineering point of view that I thought I would share with everybody. So the first thing about these hives is they are made of a synthetic material. They are made of polystyrene that's been compressed, highly compressed, so they are not like the polystyrene that you typically get from a drink cooler that you would bring on a picnic. Again, that was one of my concerns was looking at the durability of these. They claim a durability equivalent to wood if painted, uh, but again, I was thinking, what if these are like that drink cooler that I had that fell apart after a year or two? I couldn't have been 100% wrong. These are totally different. The material is a synthetic material, but it's as dense as wood. Um, you cannot put an impression with your finger into these hives. So they are extremely strong. You can actually sit on these and they won't break. You can see, I mean, they are like wood. They're real easy to go together. You glue them together. There's a little tongue that fits in a little um, slot there. They go together very easily with polystyrene glue or with waterproof glue. Uh, they go together in just a couple of minutes. You'll also notice that they have these little plastic slides both on the top and on the bottom. And these little plastic uh, shelves here serve a couple of different purposes. One, they're the frame rest. So where the frames will rest. So the frames are not resting actually on the polystyrene material. They're resting on the plastic. Secondly, it's a system and it goes together interlocking unlike a typical wooden hive where they're just resting on the edge they actually insert into one another. The third thing is, if you think about it, and this was one of my concerns as well, when you're prying a hive apart, a hive body apart with your hive tool, the wood, obviously on the corners and the sides, get buggered up over time. I was concerned using a metal hive tool to pry that apart and buggering up and chipping that end of the material. These serve as a place to pry the boxes apart as well. So there's protection all the way around. So they have thought about the durability and the use of hive tools as part of their engineering. So I'm glad to see that uh, part of the uh, engineering in terms of their design and how that would work. I've also been told that the bees don't propolize these to the same extent that they do wood. But again, I don't have any experience with that. I'm just going by what people have said. So again, it is a system. It fits together. You'll notice that there's a little ledge. And they just interlock. So very nice. What I did after researching was to apply three coats of waterproof barn paint to these, to the exterior. So again, to protect from UV, that is recommended. There was an ongoing debate on the internet and in some bee forums as to whether you should paint the inside. Uh, everyone recommends painting if you use this Bee Box, Bee World uh, system, if you use their feeders to paint the inside of the liquid feeder. But the actual boxes themselves uh, the verdict is out. There's, I found an equal number of people recommending painting the inside of the box or not painting the inside of the box. And I decided to go against painting the inside of the box, just leaving it with the natural material. 
And again, my reasoning behind that was simply not to expose the bees to any kind of chemicals there might be in the barn paint. Uh, if you've used barn paint, it smells a little funky. And I didn't want to expose the internals, uh, the bees internally here in the box to that paint. So I decided against that. Again, I have no experience practically with that. I don't know whether it's the right or wrong thing. I just know what people have told me. And there seemed to be an equal amount of people saying to paint and an equal number of people saying that they didn't paint and both had successes. So this time around, I am not painting the inside of the box. These boxes are available in mediums and in deeps, so you can use either format or structure. I run all mediums right now, so again, what I did is I bought all mediums. So I'm going to set this up next spring in my bee yard with all mediums. A little shout out here. Uh, I bought these from Blue Sky Bee Supply. Uh, great people. Um, really great customer service, a nice selection of, of uh, bee supplies there. Uh, couldn't be happier with the service that I got from them. So they won me over as a customer. So these I got from them at a very, very good price. These are extremely cost effective compared to the price of woodenware if you're buying in smaller quantities. I am not a commercial beekeeper. I don't buy boxes by the dozens or by the hundreds. Um, but if you're looking to buy onesie twosie, um, under 10 at a time, these are very, very cost competitive with that. A full medium setup with six boxes, bottom board, and a top uh, is less than what you would buy if you went to any of the big B suppliers for woodenware. So very cost competitive as well. So that's a little bit about the boxes and the system itself. You'll notice here, I have a frame. This is a Brushy Mountain frame, which I really like. They simply fit in the box, flush with the top, resting on these little plastic guides. So very, very easy, very compatible with uh, any of the standard frames that you can buy from any of the big bee suppliers. So let's take a look at the bottom board. One of the things that comes with this hive system is a integrated screened bottom board with a sliding panel that can be used for ventilation or it can be used as a sticky board for Varroa monitoring. Again, it's designed in much the same way. It doesn't have the plastic rests on it, but you can see that there are these insets that allow the boxes to simply sit as part of the system resting on the bottom board itself. So it fits very nicely in there, giving the bees a little landing area here, plus a standard entrance, again, which you can't see, but you can see where my finger is going through, an entrance for the bees to get in. So again, same material with the integrated screened bottom board for ventilation or for Varroa monitoring. Again, a nice little feature that's been engineered into this product. The top serves two purposes. One, it's a standard top. You don't need an inner cover with this. The top itself serves as both an inner cover and a top couple of nice little features about the top. One, plastic protectors on the side. So if you've got a strap going around your hive to keep everything together, protecting it from the wind, it won't bugger up your polystyrene. So these little guards on the side prevent that from dig digging in. The top itself fits into the system very snugly as both an integrated inner cover and a top together, or it can be reversed and used as either a top entrance, or if you place a propolis screen across the top, 
It can be used as upper ventilation or if you're interested in collecting propolis, which I like to do. So this opening here, if you place a propolis screen in there, the bees can't get through, but they see the light and they will propolize that propolis screen according to people that use these very, very quickly. So it's a great way of collecting your propolis or adding some additional ventilation into your hive. On the top, there's a little indentation that's made into the top here. This allows you to place a feeder on the top of your frames without a shim, giving you enough room to actually have the feeder integrated in to the inside of your boxes. So for example, I use a baggie feeder, one gallon baggie feeders. It would easily fit on the top of my frames and this little channel here gives it the room so that the top wouldn't be right on top of that baggie feeder nice little feature. If you're not using that, there's a little insert that goes right in that will close that up. And again, it just presses in to the actual top of the inner cover and makes it completely flat. So again, a couple of nice little features included in this integrated top inner cover component. And it fits together as part of the system. One, actually a couple little modifications that I made. Um, they have an interesting way of approaching an entrance reducer. The company makes an entrance reducer for these hives that use these little sliding panels. They fit in a channel and they slide. They allow you to adjust the opening of your hive. So you can open it on one side or both or have them moved over to one side completely or you can actually slide them completely off and have an opening just the size for a single bee if you were running into some sort of a robbing situation. First problem that I came across with their engineering is these entrance reducers I believe this is my theory, are cut in Europe for a larger hive, for a, maybe a national size or a different European size. So what happens is they're actually about a half an inch longer. They don't fit in the opening here. So what I did was, in order to fit it in, I just took my Dremel tool, my cutoff wheel, and I cut a little bit off of each side. You can see my mark there. I was going to cut it off on one side, but I decided to cut a little bit off of both sides to keep the entrance in the middle, equal in the middle. That prevented me from having to cut the polystyrene on this side, a channel, so that it would fit in. It Literally, when I put it in the first time, it was sitting that far over. So I would have had to have cut out all this polystyrene in order for that to fit in there. So I simply took a Dremel tool and cut both ends off. And I believe that this is a, an, an issue no matter where you buy these from, they're all cut to the same size. So that's one mod that I did. I like this concept of this sliding entrance reducer, but here's where I ran into the second problem. The opening was extremely narrow. I mean, it wasn't even a quarter of an inch. And I thought that was way too narrow. So what I did was, again, using my Dremel tool and my diamond cutter, I just drew a line across and cut the opening a little bit wider. So now I have a little bit of a wider entrance for the bees to get in, but I decided to take it one step further. If you notice, one end is actually wider than the other end. You can see right there in the middle where I've kind of graduated it. What this does, it allows me to keep the opening very narrow and very small at one end, or if I chose, I could actually open it up 
and have a much wider entrance, taller entrance at this side, and then actually leave it and make it so there's only one B's width to get through. So it gives me some options as to how I want to run my entrance reducer. Again, these doors just kind of slide and completely close it if you wanted to completely close it for whatever reason. So again, that was the second mod that I made to this entrance reducer. Third issue that I came up with these entrance reducers. You'll notice here I've got a little channel cut. There's a little lip right in here that if you have this entrance reducer in, water can collect right in here. So what I did was I cut a series of little channels. You can see them. I cut a series of little channels to allow the water to drain out. So again, if I have my hive tilted slightly forward, any water that's going to collect in there is going to easily drain out. So again, that was the third modification that I made, just to make this a little bit more usable. So overall, um, I'm really happy with what I've seen so far. Other than this entrance reducer, um, everything else went together easy. Um, it was real easy to put paint on it. The paint stuck very easily to the polystyrene. There wasn't any issues with that. Very, very simple to put together. So really, that's my first impression here. And again, I want to just thank Blue Sky Bee Supply for being so nice to me and explaining, taking the time to explain uh, how these work. I actually visited their store. So uh, I wanted to just kind of put in a plug for them. They are a great group of people. So uh, those are my first impressions of this. Uh, I promise that I will have a uh, actual update of this once it's live in my yard in the spring of 2017 to kind of give you an update as to how it's actually performing with bees in it. But as of right now, um, really happy. First impressions. Really, really nice little, uh, little beehive. Extremely light. I can tell it's going to be extremely strong and that if, again, I use my hive tool in the correct spot, that it's not going to bugger up the ends. And I don't see why that I wouldn't get uh, years of use out of this product. So again, first impressions, very positive on this. If you have any questions about it or you want to ask any questions of me, what I think, uh, just leave uh, a note below and I'll get back to you. Thanks.